The contestants are, pre are prepared for a five-minute presentation each. A topic has been handed to them. They have dug deep into the scripture to study properly what the scripture is talking about. Let's move on now to our presentation. My name is Deborah Seth. I'm going to charge with us a topic, Let No Man Despise Their Youth. Our awkward text is taken from 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Youth is the state or quality of being young, to despise you, to disregard or disrespect something. The youthful stage is a crucial, crucial stage in anyone's life, characterized by vibrant intellectual capacity and energy. God has something for us as youth to do with our energy possessed at this crucial time of our lives. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 33. And Saul said unto David, Thou art not able to go out against this Philistine, to fight against him. For you have bought a youth, for he has been a man of war right from his youth. Could you imagine the kind of setback this could have caused on the little David? But he was not abated. Let no man despise that youth. Why would someone look down on you because you are young? Someone will only look down on you if you are not rooted in Christ and don't behave properly. But, be, but not behaving properly is not the qualities that God needs in our, right now in the Salvation Army. God needs us to set an example, differentiate ourselves from the other youth who are behaving badly right now. You and I need to stand and make our light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm very, very sure you might be thinking that, ah, yes, yeah, so I've despised my youth through the words of elders. I've made myself falling from the face. I want you to bow your heads and pray that, Father, I dedicate myself to you. I will dedicate my life to you. I will stand for you. I will not be ashamed to be named with you. What a wonderful presentation there from Tolu Lokwe. One thing that is very, very important there. She said you can influence the people around you and you don't even need a pulpit to do that. Wow. If you're out there thinking maybe you can't influence anybody by your conduct, by your speech, by your charity, of course, you can influence a lot of people. And one more thing that she said that's so important is that, look, it is not about you. You are not drawing others to yourself. You are, it's not about yourself. It is about Christ. Wonderful presentation, and I'm sure you had many more things to hold on to there. And so, for our number five and final contestant for this presentation, please, I invite David. David, please step forward for your presentation. Praise the Lord. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Father, we bless your name for this beautiful evening. Father, we thank you for the, another opportunity to hear your word. Father, we pray that your word will transform our lives in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name I pray. So today I'm going to be um, exhorting us on the topic, let no man that despise thy youth. And our anchor scripture is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, let no man despise thy youth, but be an example in your speech, in your conduct, in your faith, in your love, in your purity. The New Living Translation says that, let no man look down on you, or let no man think less of you because you are young. But be an example in the way you talk, in the way you behave, in the, in the way you have faith, in your love and in your purity. First of all, what is um, that first part trying to tell us? It says, let no man despise that you. Don't let anybody look down on you because you are young. The situation in Nigeria now, we see that things are actually in the political sector. You see that most of the time, you check the number of political parties you have there. You hardly find the young people there. That's the way they are despising us. They don't give us the opportunity to show forth what God has given us, the talents God has given us. They don't give us this opportunity. And that is why in our society today, we are actually not doing very good because the youths are actually very strong and vibrant at that particular age. They still have the energy to go forth and do the will of God. So, Apostle Paul has told us in these few ways that we should actually um, be a good example. And why should we be a good example? When you display a good example to others, you actually make them to feel like, yes, these people know what they are doing and they are doing things right. And when they see that they are doing things right, they tend to welcome you, they tend to accept you and tend not to despise you any longer. How are the ways we should um, prove our example? First of all, in the way we talk. The Bible says that, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth. What are we trying to say? What, yeah, so what comes out of your mouth should not be words that make uh, that mass somebody. The Bible says the, um, in life and death is the power of the tongue. 
that is trying to tell us that your words are powerful. Your words are not just ordinary, um, ordinary statements. They carry power. They carry life. And when you speak a bad word to a person, it affects the person's soul and it affects the person's inner man. And this is actually not something that it should be done by a Christian. A Christian is supposed to encourage others to do the right thing, to um, make them to grow in spirit, to grow in, in the word of God. The next way is the way we behave. How do you act in public? How do you act in private? You are supposed to know that the things you do in secret also is also your behavior what you do in secret is what you show outside every open manifestation is as a result of secret investment that is trying to tell you that even if you try to form a behavior outside it doesn't just work that way it has to start from you you have to cultivate that good behavior from yourself you start from yourself you do things right you encourage yourself to know that yes i must do this thing according to the word to the word of god for the bible says that um do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Trying to say that you should look into the world so that you know how you act at every point in time, so that you not join others in their gangs, in the, in the things they do and the things they do in the world. The next is in faith. You see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he that cometh to him must believe that he exists and that is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's to try to tell you that without faith, you cannot please God. And it starts with pleasing God. It's not about pleasing man with your speech. Even if you want to please, it doesn't start with pleasing man. You have to please God first. And, and a way of pleasing God is through your faith. You see Daniel, when they said that he should, they should, he should not pray, when they made the Lord that he should not pray, he still had that faith that, yes, I'll pray to my God and he'll answer me. He even opened the windows and he knelt down and prayed normally. That's to tell you that that guy had faith in God. He didn't care what the circumstances around him were. He didn't say that, oh, these people are going to do me anyhow. He just knew that God was going to work a way out for him. In our love, we should know that we are supposed to love God with all our hearts, with all our mights, with all our soul, with all our understanding. And actually, loving God doesn't start with us. It doesn't start with just saying you love God. It starts with the people around you. Those who you see every day, your neighbors. You are supposed to show them the kind of love Jesus showed you. You are supposed to actually encourage them and actually be kind to one another. And I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Now for purity. In our world today, we see a lot of vices. We see a lot of sexual sin. We see a lot of immorality. And one thing that comes to our mind is that why are things going this way? We see social media and we see all those platforms. Those platforms are actually making things bad. So we endeavor to actually do things right and make a way for ourselves in the name of Jesus. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, for that wonderful presentation. Some of the things he said that were so key. He said, even though we have political parties, so many of them, but we have very young people there. Why? Because the youth are being despised. But you see, that's one thing we are not doing at the Bethel Dwellers. Of course, by this platform that has been created, you can see how wonderful these youth have been able to demonstrate the word of God. I'm sure if this were a Sunday, <laughs> in fact, you will be going on with something that will take you for the rest of the week. Indeed, it has been a wonderful segment of the presentation. I would like to go to my judges now to ask them what they think about some of our presenters. Judges, let me start from our mommy, Pastor Mrs. Orelaja. Please, let us hear from you. Yeah. Uh, the first contestant uh, did he marshal the, the, those uh, points and give us examples, like others too. Um, number seven too, was, uh, she was able to, at least, when you are coming to preach, I believe you should come with the Bible. So, which she has done different from others. Uh, number two, number six, number eight too, they have really dealt with every aspect of um, that topic and that verse. I pray the Lord Almighty to take this ones to greater heights. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, mommy. Of course, let's hear from uh, Pastor Taiwo Kasum. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, the 
gentlemen and the ladies have done very, very well. I will begin by saying that uh, uh, for this generation, uh, we are blessed to have this one. Um, it's a very uncommon uh, candor that they have ex uh, exhibited here. Uh, this particular hour, uh, I'm particularly impressed, and I'm going home with a lot of, you know, uh, positive vibes from their presentation. However, having said so, I was uh, significantly looking for who was going to conclude by making an offer of salvation, which is an integral part of our sermons. Um, usually, we conclude our sermon with an altar call. Uh, very close to that will be number seven. Yeah, who actually talk about assurance of salvation for somebody who is dedicating life as well as those accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, the first speaker did justice to uh, the question also. Uh, a very confident preacher is number two. Yeah, uh, he, he talked to the scriptures uh, with so much uh, dexterity. I, I appreciate that value. Uh, the youngest of them, I, I was scared. I was actually interceding. <laughs> Uh, little did I know that, uh, you know, uh, yes, he's, he's, he's a man with fire in his bone. I, I'm impressed. The same go for David also. They've done very well today, and uh, they are a good example of uh, uh, youth in the house of God. And uh, with these ones, I think we have hope for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, Pastor Taiwo Kasumu, for that uh, feedback. Reverend Asine, please let's hear from you. When I was coming in, I had this uh, impression that I was going to see something better than last year because this one should have learned one or two things from the previous contestants. I said, yes, I, my expectation was met. They all did very well. In the delivery, every one of them marshaled out their points as far as that uh, text was concerned. I was impressed by the number eight contestant who went to do New Living Translation, like trying to open up, don't despise. I was very impressed by that. And then uh, Tolu also came up with uh, uh, that aspect of like concluding in such a way that altar call Though she didn't make altar call directly, but she went in that direction. And then the one that really impressed me was number two, when he came up with the, the picture of David. I think he did justice to it. Thank you. Excellent, excellent and wonderful mm -hmm. feedbacks for our contestants. And I'm sure that uh, you know they are very, very glad to hear some of these things and it will take them very far. Finally, we'll hear from Pastor Lanre and Nifuoshi. Please, let's hear from you, sir. Um, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, a lot of things I will have said have been mentioned by all the judges, but I will just make some references. Number one, I was um, very much impressed, you know, like um, Pastor has said that this edition is better. The consensus have actually well prepared. It was obvious that they were well prepared to deliver. In fact, if they give them more time, I'm sure <laughs> they will use it. And then I observed that also they have, all of them have good understanding. They're not just preaching. They have understanding, practical understanding of what they are saying and how it applies to them as youth. It was, that was very fundamental. Then profoundly, um, let me say, for Tolu Lokwe, it has been mentioned, you know, the way she rounded up was actually something unique. She was able to, we we're looking for that. She was able to express it, the fact that you need to lead people, because somebody is leading to that message, that message is touching someone, and the person may need to rededicate, or give their life, which is the most important thing anyway, to enter into this kingdom. So that was fundamental. Um, I think Deborah, the first person, had a very energetic, <laughs> impactful delivery. She was just fire. <laughs> there was fire in her bone. And uh, then also for Stephen, she had a lot of understanding of the practicality of let no man despise your youth. They should not push youth to the side. You know, it was really profound. And then, like as we mentioned, 
the youngest among them. <laughs> you know, I was wondering too because you know, even the way he carried himself, <laughs> would this man be able to talk? But it was I was I was highly inspired. I was like tears coming from my eyes. Wow. You know, the wow. young man, as young, 13 years old, mm -hmm. profoundly she was able to express himself. I'm, I could imagine how ministering to people around his age. So he's someone to look out for. So and then the same thing for David also. They all did wonderfully well. And like has been said, you know, the future for, for the kingdom, you know, look brighter. We have a generation of young people who God is going to use to do greater things and to make greater influence and impact in the world of today. So kudos to all of them. Absolutely. And God bless them for us. Amen. Amen. Indeed, that is the point. You see, after listening to these wonderful youngsters, we can be certain that the future is indeed bright. The future is indeed bright. Thank you very much, contestants, for those powerful, energetic, inspiring, spirit-filled presentations. Now, however, our judges have to do their job of examining these contestants. They have put down scores based on the criteria that has been set. And they will be sharing that with us as we collate all of the scores. And we will be able to select the winner from this edition of Understanding the Scriptures. UTS. After this break, we will be finding out who comes top of the park. Thank you. Novikla Interiors is an interior design company that specializes in interior design for both residential and commercial spaces. At Novikla Interiors, we beautify spaces just for you. Hi, my name is Oluwashi Yogrindi. I'm the creative director of Novekla Interiors. transform spaces just for you. You can reach us on the information displayed on the screen. Looking forward to hearing from you. I can't wait to transform your space. Welcome back to UTS, Understanding the Scriptures. Wow, right now, we are at the big announcement. Who takes home the prize? of 500,000 Naira. Who's going to come second? And who will be third? Well, we all know that all of these contestants have done very well. But there must be a winner, since it is a competition. Of course, we also know that the winner at the end of the day is our Lord Jesus Christ. But then, of course, as it is, we must announce the winner here. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to our wardrobe manager, Fresh Boutique. If you like what I'm wearing, please pay them a visit at number 19, Channels Road, Opic, Lagos, Nigeria. And I'm sure you will be getting full value for whatever you are paying. Now, it's time to announce our top three. But first, we'll be announcing the fourth runner-up and of course, we'll be announcing the third runner-up. Contestants, are you ready? Are you ready? All right. If I call your name, please step forward. For the fourth runner-up, David, please step forward. Step forward, please come forward. Please, contestants, give him a round of applause. David, you did excellently well. Please, you did excellently well. 
It was a great performance from you, from you, and we are really appreciative of you coming here today. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you richly indeed. God bless you. You may step down from the stage. Thank you very much, David, for really a wonderful competition that you gave us. Now, of course, we also have to announce the third runner-up right after the short break. Welcome back. We just uh, announced our fourth runner-up, David. Now it's time to announce the third runner-up. Contestants, are you ready? When you hear a name, please step forward. Steven, please step forward. You are not the third runner-up. You can move back to your stand. <laughs> Jedidiah, please step forward. Jedidiah is our third runner-up. Look, Jedidiah, you have done great. Don't look down. Let no man despise your youth. You have done excellently well. You have fought a good fight in this competition, and I'm sure it's a fight you will continue to fight. Thank you very much. You really gave us a good competition. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. A round of applause for you, please. We have our top three on the stage. How are you guys feeling? What do you think are your chances now? Steven? How did you feel about being called forward? <laughs> how did you feel? Let me know. What did you, how did you feel? I, I was like, maybe someone would despise my youth. <laughs> Interesting. No one can despise your youth. Not after the kind of presentation that you have made here today and the kind of competition you have given us. Of course, we will be announcing our top three right now. We have our top three contestants. They have done excellently well indeed, but only one of them can take the top prize. But I might also mention that the second runner-up will be going home with 200,000 Naira. The first runner-up will be going home with 300,000 Naira. And the winner of UTS 1.2 will be going home with 500,000 Naira. Said Deborah, step forward. You are the second runner up. Congratulations. You have done very, very well in this presentation and you have come third. How does that make you feel? I'm excited. You're excited. Please, I would like to invite. Reverend Asine to make the presentation for Seth Deborah, the second runner up for UTS 1.2. Seth, congratulations on behalf of the dwellers. This God bless you. Congratulations, Seth Deborah. You may step aside. Yes, now to the moment of truth for our winner who will be announcing the one going home with the grand prize for this edition 1.2 of the UTS, Understanding the Scriptures. The winner for UTS 1.2 We'll find out right after this break. The 
Bethel Dwellers present UTS 2.1 Understanding the Scripture, a Bible quiz contest project open to all Christians within the ages of 12 to 30 years. Over 500 participants, 10 finalists, 3 winners, 1 goal. To bring us back to the Scripture, for the winners, first position gets 500,000 Naira, second position gets 300,000 Naira, and third position gets 200,000 Naira. The 10 finalists get 10,000 Naira each with other consolation prizes. New application kicks off by 1st December 2022 via our website. Note, first, second, and third stages will be conducted online, while the grand finale will be conducted physically. Please join us every Thursday between 8.30 to 9 a.m. on all Dove TV channels to watch all UTS episodes. Dove TV at channel 349 on DSTV, channel 83 on Go TV, and channel 464 on Star Times. For more information on how to apply, call 0912-376-5652 or visit www.betheldwellers.org. Click on UTS Quiz, click on Register. Entry fee is 2000 error only. UTS powered by the Bethel Dwellers. These are the list of winners from last week's home play. To all our friends at home, you also have a chance to be a part of the UTS and show us how much you understand the scriptures. Answer the question on your screen and send to the phone number on your screen via WhatsApp. No calls, no text messages. Just WhatsApp.